Good morning, everyone, and this is Ira Wolf, a company Success Performance Solutions, and we're here to talk about people clues. Uh, most of you that are on the call are already users, so this is a refresher, but I did want to make sure that everyone is using the system properly. Uh, we have a couple new users on it, and to make sure that they're using all the features, uh, quite, there's quite a few features that people seem to forget about or um, uh, don't know how to use yet. So what we're going to do is uh, cover a couple things today. And uh, one is we're going to look at how easy it is to sort candidates from the most likely to succeed to the most likely you should avoid. We're going to talk about how to set up events, which is really how you publicize uh, and invite candidates and applicants to or employees uh, to complete uh, of people clues assessment. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the four different types of reports. Uh, there's actually three different types of reports, but the four different assessments, the attitude, the job fit, and the engagement, as well as general reasoning. Uh, we're going to go over uh, how you can access the behavioral interview guides, uh, how to access development and leadership reports, and also how to compare applicants and employees uh, to uh, over 120 jobs. We're going to open this, as I said earlier, to question and answers, uh, well, questions, and then uh, hopefully I'll be able to provide you the answers. So without further delay, let's get started. And I'm going to log into the account here. What will happen is, is on the, uh, once you're in the dashboard, you will see all the people who are the latest invites. And one of the features here, you'll only, the, the default is five, but you can, view up to the 100 most recent people. We'll, we'll come back to this event, but for each job that you're looking for, you can create a separate event. Or uh, if you don't mind everybody being compared to the same uh, job template, or if you're only using this for one particular job, then it really doesn't matter. But uh, if you have a customer service job and a sales job and um, you know, as you can see in this case, this is a healthcare. Uh, you have a phlebotomist, medical assistant. Uh, you can create as many events as you like, and each event would have a default for one particular job profile. But it's very easy to sort, and, and I think people forget about this. Uh, if you wanted to see who are the people that had the highest job fit scores, uh, simply click on job fit, and it'll sort it defaults to low to high. So you can see here are the people that you probably would want to avoid or at least uh, do a little bit more in-depth analysis. Uh, if you want to go from highest to lowest, just reverse it. So again, simple as job fit, low to high, high to low, just keep clicking on that. Uh, likewise, you can sort by attitude. Uh, so the attitude scores are from low concerns, some concerns, and high, a serious concern. And again, you can look at here, here's the people who have low concern, which means they have a positive attitude toward honesty, integrity, uh, conscientiousness, uh, customer, uh, other custo customer attitude. So you can look at the, you can sort, and if you look at the scores here, uh, it's a good way to identify who you might want to look at first. And you can see a low concern in 86, that's not a bad score, 79%, that's borderline, but still a good score. 75% is right at the borderline of what we suggest. Uh, and we'll talk about those numbers in, in a little bit. Uh, but you can see here, uh, here's a low concern, but they only scored 71, a little bit more risk there. Not too bad. If you just do the job fit scores, what you're going to see is uh, here's 100%, but they have some concern on attitude. Uh, here's a serious concern. They're 93% fit as a receptionist, but serious concern. Uh, people can adapt their behavior, but it's a little harder to change their attitude. So you might put this into your uh, high risk pile, or you're going to have, uh, you know, look at uh, some other uh, traits or abilities or experience or whatever. And then you see also what's their attitude, their engagement with the job and their employer. And we'll talk a little bit more in detail with that in a second. Um, but people forget or don't know about that you can sort these very easily. Okay. The next part will be if you want to look at everyone who applied for a pharmacy tech, you just click on 
that event. If you only have one event, then it really you can click on that, and everybody will be included. Uh, you can see here uh, you have a list of people who applied. You can do the same thing. You can sort by attitude, by job fit, by engagement. Uh, you can also search uh, in there. You can expand the list if there were more, but apparently this is all that, that uh, completed the assessment. So a very easy function that people, again, um, many many of our clients uh, that use the system either forget that this feature is there or not, but it, it, it really comes in handy to look at who should you call first oh, or who should you avoid. But if you want to look at the events that are scheduled, we can go to Manage Events. Once we get onto the, in an event, uh, we can look at managing the event. Okay. And uh, this is how it's set up currently. Uh, you can, once you create this event, it's going to create a link. This link could be uh, put into an email. It could be put on your website if you have an ATS system, an, an applicant tracking system. Uh, you can include it there. Um, the warning would be that if you're on a license, an unlimited use license, that's not a problem because you you're basically have unlimited use. Uh, if you're purchasing units or if you're on a limited subscription, meaning that you only purchased up to X, and X amount, um, you basically will either run out and it's good for us that you'll have to buy more. So I would not post this link on your website if because anyone can take it. Um, it somebody, somebody could find it and just decide they want to see what their personality might be, although they don't want to get the report, but they don't know that. People can give it out to their friends. So if you're going to put this on your website, if you're on an unlimited use license, it's not a problem. If you're on uh, units or a limited subscription, then um, you know, just be a little be cautious that you may overrun that. Uh, the easiest way to do that is just email yourself a link. Okay. If you just click on that, it sends it automatically. Okay, so I will actually get a link for that, or uh, the subscriber, or the user in the system will get a link for that. You can also export all the these results. It doesn't give you the scores of individual traits, but it does give you the score, so you can put it into a spreadsheet uh, to do some analysis. Uh, if you want to manually add a participant, uh, you can click on New here. Uh, put the email and it will send them an invite. So it's another way uh, as opposed to email, you emailing the link to them from your uh, whatever mail system you're using or posting the link. You can just add them from within the system. Uh, you can add notifications. Uh, notifications are who would get notified each time someone completes this. So you can set up an unlimited number of users and let's say for pharmacy tech uh, you would have uh, Nancy but for um, uh, another, let's say, hospitality, you'd have Beth. Okay, so very easy to send out notifications, and then you'd receive an email when uh, someone has completed that. And it shows you, uh, uh, again, which assessments that were selected, what the job category was. This is the default position. Uh, if you have most everyone on the call, and most of our users only have one location. This always goes back to HR. We have some that have multiple facilities or different managers, and we can set uh, we can set that up. We're not going to go into detail with that because it's not something you're going to use very often. Okay, but let me show you what it takes to create this in the first place. And um, we're always happy to help you with this uh, if you have any questions. But uh, it's a, it's a pretty easy function too, especially after the first one's set up. Uh, the event title might be uh, let's say CSR. Okay. Um, the invitation, the text, uh, you can copy this from your other text or we can provide it to you or you can create your own. Uh, this would be what the invitation would say. What does it look like on the website? And if you send an email, what's the content in there? So we're happy to, uh, again, provide that for you if needed. Uh, and then it could be as simple as thank you for completing the assessment. Someone from our uh, human resources office or our talent management office will contact we have any questions so whatever text that you want you can include in there you can see you can put images you can put your logo you can put links you can have this if you want them after they complete this to uh, contact you or go to another page you can create a link uh, that would send them there um, most importantly uh, you want you're going to select which assessments you want to use so if you want to use the attitude assessment uh, there's the default is conscientiousness our hostility scale 
and the honesty scale. Those are the three default. Uh, we can't change those, but there is an optional sexual harassment and an optional computer misuse. These add about six to eight questions per, per scale. Obviously, it adds um, another two to four minutes per, uh, depending on how long it takes people to answer these, it takes a little bit longer. If you have any questions about when you should use sexual harassment or computer misuse, there's no additional charges and a less charge if you don't. Uh, doesn't change the va doesn't affect the validation either, but you do have that option to include those. Some people choose to include them because they get a little bit more information and they feel that's important. Some people choose to have the test a little shorter, the, the questionnaire a little bit shorter and faster, and a better customer service or a better candidate experience. So, but you do have those options, and again, happy to answer anything specifically about that. If you want to include the engagement, uh, I'd say about 25% of our clients are using the engagement. It's a short five-minute assessment and it basically asks questions um, how engaged is the current uh, candidate or is the candidate with their current job and also how engaged are they with the with their current employer so it's, you know basically it's saying do they enjoy the job they're doing and do they enjoy working for the company gives you a little insight we'll talk a little bit about that when we pull the report up and then under personality first you select personality you select the uh, suite that you'd want to use. So if we want to select one for an administrative assistant, uh, we can do that. If not, you scroll down the list if it's customer service. Uh, as I said, there's 120 jobs if you have all the job modules. In the business suite, there are 60. So there's uh, almost everything that you would use um, for uh, most general business positions. And uh, we even have labor positions in there as well. So if you wanted to set this up for warehouse, you can do that. And then if you want to include the general reasoning, it's a seven-minute timed assessment, which I think most of you are familiar with. Uh, it will take people a little bit longer than seven minutes because they have to read the instructions. But the, that's the only section that is actually timed, and they're limited to seven minutes. And the timer will go off, and uh, it, the score will be based on how many correct answers they got within that seven minutes of time. Um, if you choose to do a simple version and just do the personality fit, you just select that, job suite, what job. You come down here, if you want to make it active, set there. If you want this to expire on a certain date, you can. If you have multiple divisions, you select it there. I would suggest at this point just sticking with the standard. Uh, form here. If you have any questions about setting up the custom, we'll come back to that, but the standard seems to work in 90% of, of or more of all the uh, situations you'll get into. And I'm not going to create this for them because this is live, but um, if you wanted to save all this, you would have this under a new event, and then it would create a unique URL, as I showed you before, a unique email that could be sent out, uh, or a site that you can go to to add participants. And that way, everyone who would be um, who would be requested to complete the questionnaire on that unique link uh, would automatically uh, have the warehouse uh, again, probably the wrong title for that, um, but would have the job category of warehouse uh, benchmark applied to that. So that's all automatic. You can go in and change these at any time, and you can also take that individual and run them against the multiple reports later. Uh, but currently there's one default. We are working, uh, I don't know how, with the, with the programmers, I'm not sure how quickly this will be done. I'm going to say probably 2017, where you're going to have the option to include multiple uh, job categories. So let's say you have a uh, inside sales and you want to know what their selling profile looks like but you also want to know what their customer service profile is like or maybe for a warehouse uh, you want to know um, how they fit in the warehouse but you also want to know data entry uh, or one of the other positions so you would be able to include multiple ones but currently there's only one so I'm going to stop there before we go back and look at the specifics and unmute everyone and see if there's any questions Okay. So any questions on setting up an event, how to select the different uh, profiles that are automatically processed? How many, how many, this is from, uh, how many job titles did you say that there were in the database? There's 125 plus. There was one added. I'm going to say 126, but there's over 120 for sure. 
Um, they yeah. the default is business category or is a business category, uh, which includes about 60. But it's a healthcare. There's property management. Uh, there's salons and spas. Um, there is uh, hospitality, and I forgot one, but uh, there's but again they are available. Uh, we we turn them so, off for most people. And so within hospitality would be restaurants or food service type. So yeah, it's hotel. Yeah, it's a good question. It's yeah. it's primarily hotel, motel, lodging, and. Um, Restaurants. Uh, so there's a greeter. Uh, there's a server. There's a greeter. There's front of the. There's a. a there's a receptionist. Um, there's a chef. Um, there's a, a cook. A line cook. Uh, there's about ten to twelve that would fit underneath there. Uh, again, target audience initially was for restaurants, uh, but hotels and motels are included in that. Okay, got it. Thank yeah. you. So we have some people using that in, uh, in fact, one of our, our larger clients. Uh, well, you can see here's a, there's a hospital. Uh, they're using it for their food service. Uh, so it's not strictly just restaurants or, or uh, yeah. the, the hospitality industry. Uh, we have a retirement, a few retirement communities are using that for their, um, <clears throat> you know, as well for their food service. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, this is Rich. I kind of got a question off of that because I believe we're using the hospitality setup on ours, um, which like you said, breaks down into server, line cook, bartender, I believe is in there too. Um, right. If we're not hiring for like a bartender position does and they score low in that, does that affect their overall score in the category then? No, each the each of the jobs is benchmarked separately, so they can be a, a terrible line cook, but they could be maybe a great restaurant manager, which would right. probably make right. sense. But so we'll show that. That's actually one we're going to show you how to benchmark against other jobs, and this this allows you to say, hey, we're you know we're really interested. This candidate didn't fit here, but I'm wondering if they might be a good uh, candidate for another position. Uh, it's a very, very easy process to go through. So we're well, happy to show you that. Okay, because that's kind of my question. When I had a candidate that we were interviewing a week ago, and he sco we were looking for him to be like a line cook server, and he scored well in line cook, but he scored real low on bartender and management and stuff, and his overall job fit score was relatively low, which kind of surprised us. Yeah, and we'll, we can talk a little bit about that. We're not going to go into, I'm not going to go into a lot of the interpretation of the, of the reports. I'm actually working on my August and September webinars, and we'll be talking about interpretation and how to go into that. But uh, I can address that a little bit when we get to the uh, uh, section to show you how to apply that, those scores uh, to, you know, up to 120 more jobs. Okay. So. All right. Any, anybody else? Good questions. Thanks. Now I'm going to mute everyone again, and we'll go on to the next section. So as we're looking here, um, we'll we'll go back to uh, let's say let's pick out an interesting one here. So here's one that has a 79% job fit and also serious concerns, but good engagement. So the question is, looks like an okay job fit, but has some risk. So let's click on the name, and you can do this from that first page. Uh, at your dashboard, if um, you wanted to uh, click on that uh, little icon to the right, uh, but most people will, if you have people that are assigned to only pharmacy tech, then the easiest place to look at them is to, to click on that link and see all the people listed uh, who have completed the assessment for that particular position. So let's look at the job fit score first. Um, just give you a tour of the page. Each of these blocks will allow you to open up the individual report. Uh, underneath, you're going to see when they applied, their name, their email, uh, if they left a phone number, what their address is. Uh, these are all optional, by the way. Uh, the only mandatory uh, uh, login information that we need is they need uh, we need their name and we need an email address, uh, and that's all that's required. 
uh, the phone is optional and the address is optional. But we don't re we don't collect social security numbers or, or anything else. Uh, we're working with a new client, uh, a bank, and their due diligence is just incredible. Uh, and because of many of the regulations and Dodd Frank and security issues, um, it was they didn't realize how easy it was. Uh, because most other systems require a lot of other information to be collected. Okay. Obviously, you'll need that information at some point, but we don't uh, collect that. Uh, there's also additional reports that will run. I'll come back to that in a minute. And then uh, also uh, the interview questions and how you uh, view all the scores uh, for all the positions. But let's go back to opening up a report. Okay. So, on the reports, and I'm just going to come go scroll down, and then I'll go back up to that red warning was. Okay. You'll see each report has a bell-shaped curve. There's two different types of scales that are on here. One is this bell-shaped curve, which compares the individual to the rest of the population, regardless of what uh, position they're applying for. The second one is the job benchmarking, which shows uh, either in a yellow, a red, yellow, and green, or occasionally there will just be a yellow and green. Uh, in a case where there's no red, it just indicated that this uh, this particular scale uh, for this position under tough mindedness, uh, there was no one that actually uh, failed in this position because of this trait. There were people that failed in the position, but the trait was not indicative. So even though people were either agreeable or very direct and uh, bold in their approach and assertive in their approach. Um, that might have made them an average or above or slightly above performer. Uh, didn't make them a great performer, uh, but it didn't exclude them from that particular role. But you can see that in other positions there is there are there are red areas, and, and if you go back here, you're going to see that the participants it does give you a warning anytime somebody does score in the red. So if you scroll down. You know, to see here, under extroversion, this person happens to be a talker. Based on this bell-shaped curve, they would be in approximately the top 2% of the population. 98% of the population actually talks less than they do, um, is less outgoing than they are. The important part isn't that they're outgoing or, or talker, is how does that fit into this role? How does it fit into your culture? In this case, it did show up as a red. Uh, I will also tell you that extroversion and introversion is typically, uh, although people do rely on this quite a bit on the extroversion and introversion scale, uh, although people rely on it quite a bit, it is probably one of the le least reliable scales because if it was that easy that an extrovert, uh, if you're extroverted, um, was a reliable indicator everybody was an extrovert would be a great salesperson and a great motivator and probably a good manager and people who are introverts should stick to accounting and engineering but we know it's not quite that simple and there are many other compensatory um, uh, traits and qualities and characteristics that affect uh, job performance much more than extroversion. There are obviously problems with people who are doing all the talking because if you're doing all the talking you're not doing much listening. Um, the where the green spot is here, if you're a farm, pharmacy tech, you're probably in a more introverted environment. So that's where that would uh, show up. But it does show that there's quite a range of, of um, extroversion and introversion that would be acceptable. Okay. Uh, but you'll have that for each of the scales. On each of the, there are six scales. And again, I'm not going to go into great detail of what these mean. Uh, but in each report, uh, you will see the conscientious scale, which is how detailed they are or how impulsive or carefree. Uh, under tough-mindedness is how direct, assertive, and bold, or do they tend to be more cooperative and agreeable? Uh, under conventional, do they tend to follow the rules? Do they, do they look for rules? Do they, do they um, seek guidelines? Do they, like, do they like to be managed a little bit? Uh, or do they like to be in sort of a free-for-all environment? Uh, and again, that's more cultural fit. Uh, than anything. Some jobs, obviously a quality job such as pharmacy tech would require, would, would generally require somebody to be more structured and not make up the rules as they go along, but ultimately, uh, you know, you'll need to make that decision. Uh, extroversion is pretty explanatory. Someone who's outgoing or very uh, reserved, good listener. Uh, stability, this is one of the most important scales. How do they deal with the stresses of the job? There's very few jobs that anymore that don't have some stress with it. Some are, are certainly more as stressful than others. Uh, difference of working in uh, maybe an accounting office versus working in a trauma 
trauma center near a mass shooting. Um, obviously, you need people that are much more resistant and can deal with that stress, uh, but still have a sense of urgency in a trauma center, in an accounting office, although everybody thinks it's crazy and wild at tax time, it's never quite the same to that same degree as uh, in other environments. Uh, but this is one of the most reliable scales and it's one of the most important scales that we see people using. Um, and then the sixth one happens to be team work. Does that person have to be more individualistic and competitive or do they tend to value uh, being part of a team and working on a team? Uh, the good impression scale is a distortion scale. Uh, this says how, how reliable are the results? Can I trust the results? If, the, if you get a star on either end of these, then the results might be distorted a little bit. Uh, there's two primary reasons people will have distortion. One is uh, if they intentionally tried to mislead you and created, try to create a good impression because they think they know what you're looking for. Um, the other one happens to be uh, sometimes people are just naive. Uh, this person may not be as good as a team player as, as, he, or, as he or she thinks they are, he is, um, but um, you know, you can and do that, go through an interview. If you see all the stars lined up all to the right or all to the left, that's usually an indicate that somebody tried to fudge it. Um, there's a couple in the middle here. Uh, I would venture to say if I was interviewing this person that they probably are a bit naive and this may be a fair representation, but if you have questions anytime you see a high or a low good impression score, just pick up the phone or email uh, one of us and we'll be happy to walk you through that and give you some hints of what you should pursue, uh, how you should utilize that. You also have the option of downloading this as a PDF. Um, you can click on that and it'll download it depending on what browser you're using in this case and you can open it up and save it to your hard drive. You can also email this uh, to other users. You can email this to one of your hiring managers or a client. If uh, I know we have a couple consultants on the phone and if you're managing the system, uh, it's a very simple process. Just put their email here, separate multiple emails by commas, hit the send report and it will send that direct from the system. Um, I recommend uh, doing the, the PDF uh, only because it, it's, if you have to go back and refer to it, it's already saved to your hard drive. Uh, but that's up to you. Uh, these are on the system. Currently, we're not even archiving. They go back several years. Uh, but at some point, uh, if you came into the system, they may not be readily available. So that's the job report, job fit report. If we look at the attitude report, um, it's a little simpler. And, and the job fit report will eventually look like this. Again, we're working through some programming uh, to make it a little simpler report. Uh, in this case, they're using all the scales. I mentioned earlier that sexual harassment, which asks questions if somebody thinks it's appropriate to tell a dirty joke, ask coworkers after a date, on their computer misuse, uh, is it okay to use the personal computer on business time, um, and uh, there's, especially with personal devices, and uh, you know people spending doing a lot of personal things on your dollar. Um, it's it's a it's a an important um, scale and some people find it's very worthwhile, others don't. Uh, if you can see here, uh, if we didn't have this good impression score, you would think this person is a great fit because there are low concerns on hostility. They have a great attitude toward working with others. They, they're conscientious, they show up all the time, they're integrity. But if you come down to the good impression score, it, they're at the highest level you can possibly be. So that's why we got this serious concern. If you now coordinate those two scores, remember that it was 79% and had some con, uh, a high good impression on the uh, job fit report and um, they have a high good impression on this report and the only way this could actually happen is this person's really an angel walking on earth or they fibbed a bit. Uh, they weren't quite as honest with the answers as that you would expect. And uh, therefore, to me, this would be a very high risk, higher. Um, there's other extenuating circumstances, such as experience and resume and fit, but that's a, you know how, how you want to use it. That would give a good indication. The one caveat with the attitudes report is do not, 
do not use this on existing employees for two reasons. One is you will get a lot of exaggerated um, disguised high good impression scores um, just because they happen to be working and they don't want to get fired. So even unintentionally and subconsciously they may respond in a way uh, that's uh, going to skew this. Uh, the other factor is uh, what would you do if this person um, had a high showed up in the red for integrity and they were one of your favorite employees they've been working for you with you for 10 years and yet this came up as a concern um, you know it, it would be good to know that they had some risk but um, it it opens a Pandora's box so it's one of the very few situations that ignorance is not bliss uh, and uh, we, the, the rule of thumb, and it's not just us, this is across the board for honesty and integrity tests. Uh, they're typically best used on only new hires and primarily, I won't say lower skill, but lower position, um, not necessarily professionals, certainly not executives, uh, depends on the role of the salesperson, but the higher you go up, the more responsibility, the more educated, the more experience they have in the workplace, the, the more likely you're going to have high good impression scores. So again, this is primarily for those hourly employees, high turnover positions. And finally, uh, show you the engagement survey, although you can click on it two different ways. It's actually a single report. Uh, you only get two scales. It will show you the job engagement, in this case is high, and the employer engagement, this is high. There is no distortion scale on this, uh, but based on the other two, I would, and as high as these are, I would suspect that these are faked as well. Again, you can click on the download uh, PDF. You can email this report uh, to a manager. Uh, I neglected to show you this on the on the other two reports, but there are interview questions that are included within each of the reports. So let me go back and show you on the, uh, you will have one or sometimes two questions included with uh, following this brief description of what this means. Uh, so there are some interview questions here, but there are additional interview questions. So let me go to that. Uh, for the attitudes, you have to run them separately. This is one of the favorite parts uh, for me. There aren't going to be any questions for her because there was um, because she had in the actual report, and then you can run an additional interview questions, and there'll be three more. So you're going to have uh, between four and five interview questions for each scale. These are not boilerplate, meaning that you won't get this exactly the same ones for everybody, but depending on how someone answered the report, if they happen to be very detailed, you'll get one version of the question. If they happen to be more impulsive and carefree, you'll get a different version, um, but, they, uh, but you will have additional questions. And uh, we do have some clients that actually don't show the hiring manager the actual score. They only show them the interview questions. Um, but I'm going to have to, let me go back to here, because I do want to show you another candidate that had some serious concerns. Okay, so let's go, here's another one with serious concerns. Let's see why. Okay, so what will happen is if they have serious concerns on their sexual harassment, um, they're, it's going to push out a few questions, and you'll essentially get an indication of why that individual might have, uh, what question they answered. So this one reads, it often happens that when a group of uh, colleagues get together, either on the job or after work, the conversation gets a bit raunchy. People start to tell off-color jokes, make sexual remarks. Uh, tell me a time when you found yourself in a situation. How did you handle it? Um, one of the th this would come from a, a number of questions, and some of those questions might be: um, I have told a off colored an off color joke uh, to my coworkers. Uh, I think people too, are too offensive, get uh, or get too defend or are too defensive when they hear an off color joke. Um, so there's a number of questions that could prompt this, but if they ask, if they respond in a in a somewhat risky way, it'll it'll um, uh, print out that question for you. Um, 
there are similar questions for each of the scales if you use the conscientious scale and they say that uh, they think uh, my boss is too uh, hard on me because I show up late occasionally um, that will get a rejection and then you'll get an interview question so you can basically go back and figure out what questions prompted it uh, but most importantly you get an indication of what should you focus on um, the uh, the one exception is uh, because that individual had such a high uh, good impression score and all their concerns, uh, all their other traits were of, uh, had, had the lowest level of concern, there weren't any questions prompted. But as soon as the scale starts to move from left to right into higher areas of the green, yellow, or red, then you will have additional questions. And you can, all, again, you can print this out and send this. So I, I do always suggest looking at the attitude questions. So let me open up before we go into how to access uh, the other reports and the development questions, see if there's any. Okay. So any questions on each of the four reports, uh, not necessarily interpreting them, but not silence, I hope is good. Right. We'll go on to the final one. Oh, go ahead. Somebody have a question? No, I was just saying you blanked out there for a second in the end, and I said no. Okay, good. Okay. So let's go back to, um, since the question was asked earlier, I want to make sure we get this covered and um, we're coming up on the, toward the end. Um, what will happen is you can click on their, you, you go to this page. So from that you pull up their, uh, the participants page. Under other actions, the very last one says view all scores and activity. And it will default to five, and it goes by alphabetical order. You can view up to 100 different positions simultaneously. And so you can see where this person was 100 under, uh, was 100 percent for the pharmacy tech. Uh, as an a senior, an executive administrative assistant, uh, they'd be 79 percent. They'd be 75 percent as an artist. Um, we can sort those, just sort by score. So as a telemarketer, not very good, 58%. As a registered nurse and an ER, not very good, 67%. Executive management needs some work. Does it? Um, just as a rule of thumb, by the way, 75% or above is a good fit. 60 to 74% is has some concerns. 59% are, are below are very high risk. That doesn't, it's not a guarantee they won't, can't make it because people have other work ethics and traits and qualities that sometimes compensate. But ultimately, uh, mo uh, over 80% of people that score 59% or below are, are, are the poor performers. Okay. So you can see as a consultant, as an entrepreneur, as a teacher, but if we rever reverse it, you can see um, here's a case. If she doesn't make it as a farm tech, she can be a dishwasher, um, pharmacy aid, work in a warehouse, be food service, uh, customer service. Um, but each of these, based on the way she responded, it looks like she'd be a good fit in multiple positions uh, from all levels. Some are hourly, high school degree. Uh, some required graduate degrees uh, to perform. So you can see where personality um, at least on the six scales that we're rating, can uh, will give you an indication where they where they might fit. Uh, you can run the report as well. You can click on that. Um, but if you want to view it, you want to click on here. If you want the additional interview questions, so just a little delay in pulling that up. Okay. But you can basically click on these and. Scroll down to the bottom and then send those. So if you wanted to receive this, you would click on your email or someone else's email and forward what those reports would look like. Or if you just wanted to view it on the screen, as I just did, uh, let's look at warehouse. So it'll just pull that report up. Okay. So very easy ways to view multiple people. Another way to get to that, let's say uh, we wanted to say how she would do as a supervisor. Because we're, we, we also have, we have an opening for a pharmacy tech, but we also have an opening for a team lead. And as soon as you do that, it's going to pull up supervisor. And here would be in healthcare and still a 96 fit uh, as a general supervisor in business. So this has, a lot of the supervisors here were in manufacturing. 
uh, versus being in healthcare. So in a manufacturing environment, still a good fit, 83%, but not quite as good as a fit uh, with the direct healthcare. Now, I will tell you that the range between 83 and 96, there were certain areas that uh, she fell off the mark a little bit, uh, but still no red zones. Uh, it might have just been on the outlier of some green. Um, but I would not put a lot of weight, the difference between 83 and 96. Uh, we have people that say we only want to hire people above 90. In today's environment, you're just going to reject a lot of people who are well qualified for the job. So minimal, uh, without some study, advanced study that we're happy to help you with, minimal cutoff I would do is 80%, but to be on the safe side, uh, at least especially starting to use the system, I would go down to 75. There's a number of other reports that are available. Uh, there's a leadership develop identifier report. This is quite good. It's uh, kind of a rudimentary form of going, uh, applying people to see what the, how their personality relates uh, to certain competencies, such as making decisions, motivating others, planning and time management, and so forth. Um, and you can see compared to others where they may have uh, fell off the mark a little bit. And that's probably why she didn't score. She scored a little lower in the um, supervisor role because supervisors need to make some decisions, not as many as managers or other leaders. But again, that depends on the role and the responsibility and the job description you have within the company. But that's one report. There's also a leadership management report. Okay. This gives you a little bit more text. Uh, this report is uh, part of our development series, and you can actually provide this to the individuals because it provides a tip. So anyone that's completed this report uh, internally um, or once you hire them, I don't suggest giving this out beforehand, but that's your option, can actually say, you know, based on, on, the, re on the assessment you took, uh, this is a little bit about how you would approach uh, making decisions. And here's a tip. Again, rudimentary development report, but for hourly employees, it's concluded. It doesn't cost you any more to run it. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice value for you. Uh, there's also, uh, as a, for managers, uh, if you're hiring a new employee, there's an onboarding report. And this is an introduction to the manager of, for Roberta. And it says, here's best ways to manage her. And if you have an existing employee, you can do the same thing. You can also give this to the uh, employee uh, and ask them what they agree with or disagree with or use this as a first step in a conversation uh, for um, uh, development performance review. And again, you can send this out or download it. So um, on each of your um, reports, you're going to have a number of different boxes here. I suggest clicking on them and uh, taking a, a look at them. If you have any questions with that, happy to show you. But um, some of you will use all of these, and a few of you will a few of you will use some of them. But I encourage you to use them. Uh, whether you're buying units uh, or whether you're buying a license, uh, you have these are all included in the system. So let me unmute everybody um, because we covered most of the bases here of how to um, how to get your interview guides again over here how to get your development reports, leadership reports, and how to uh, view your additional ones. So at this point, let me open up the mic. So what questions do you have? What didn't I answer for you, um, or what did I confuse you on? The silence good. <laughs> Was this helpful for everyone? I interrupted someone. Sorry. No, I was just this Ron. I was just saying thank you. Uh, it helped me again to refresh my memory about it. So thank you. Yeah, very good. Well, if no one has any additional questions, um, we can sign off. No sense of. Uh, hanging out here. Uh, if anyone has questions that they didn't want to ask in public, you've got my contact information. Email me if you have, uh, if you need a demo uh, uh, on this for your organization, let us know. Always happy to help.
uh, Allison or I, and um, we'll, we can go from there. But I appreciate everybody being part of this and, uh, and for certainly using people clues.